Hi all, Rick here and this video is going to be quite different from the regular uploads as I just hit 50,000 subs, yay, thank you all, and wanted to do a general Q&A. So this is a semi-scripted, but not really, and by that I mean that I have notes but not a whole script worked out, so it's probably going to be a bit more rambly than usual as I answer questions on various topics, not just Trek. Also, if you want more informal vids like this, then let me know. I could do monthly comments or something like, but that's all dependent on whether or not you actually want to see this. So without further delay, let's look at the responses. So first question, uh, how much effort does it take to make your Star Trek Online videos? Though they don't seem to be your most popular videos, they are satisfying a Star Trek itch I've had for a long time. I especially love your narration. Well, first off, thank you very much, Lee. The Star Trek Online story series seems to have a small but like consistent viewer base, and I'm super appreciative of that. Um, it takes about two days, maybe, to make an episode. Usually I record the footage in bulk, like twice a month, and then work on it over the weekends for Tuesday's release. I like to have it completed in one day if possible, hence the reason why you'll rarely see them over 40 minutes long, because then if I spend that long working on it, it will clip into the workflow of the week's later videos. So, yeah. um, Actually, I'm curious, so let me post a counter question to you guys. Were you, as viewers of it, all players of Star Trek Online, or are there some among you who are watching the series completely blind without ever having played the game? Just curious. It would be great to have you create content on Stargate. It's a goldmine of lore and cultural indexes, or in less broad terms, anything on Q. Well trodden ground, but it's always exciting to glean anything new about the goo. Uh, Stargate. I've not seen much of Stargate, which is why I've not done much content on it. Um, when I start looking into a series, game, show, whatever to research, I like to like immerse myself in it to explore as much about it as I can, which eats up time. And Stargate, there's a lot of. So I'd never say no to a new series being added to the channel, but bigger series like Stargate, Andromeda, Farscape and so on, require a larger commitment of my time so it's not always easy to fit in with what I'm currently producing. I was able to do like Firefly Law though, which is a series I'd already seen and wanted to immerse myself in the surrounding lore like the comics and I'm always happy to do videos on the queue, although I feel that I should redo that queue video on my channel from years ago as looking back on it I can think of several improvements like further emphasising the memory beta content from the Prime and just the overall transitions. Have you ever played Advent Rising? Despite the overwhelmingly negative reviews, I thought it had so much potential in the genre, and I'm not ashamed to say I really enjoyed playing the game and I love the story. No, no I has not. I've played a few smaller titles and I would like to upload more gameplay stuff, um, where I could do things like Advent Rising, though I feel like the certifiably in-game channel might not be the right place for it because of all the law focused content on there. Uh, maybe if I can figure out live streaming and add that in, or open up a separate channel for game playthroughs, but again, time sync. Um, I wouldn't want that to cut into my three video schedule as it stands already. If you just branch out into Metal Gear Solid lore, you'll be the one-stop shop for all my favourite convoluted franchises. I've played a couple of them, I've never completed one though. Um, it's one of those franchises that I look at from far away and say, yeah, I, I get why that's so popular. There's a lot going on there and it looks really cool and I had fun playing it. But I get confused. As you said, it can be quite convoluted and I get yeah, messed up with the game's canon and I think I need someone to explain it to me, to be honest. Would you like some toast? Depends on the toaster. If it's going to try and kill me, no. But if it's going to throw a major wobbly if I refuse, then sure. What are your favourite fictional cultures and societies from sci-fi and fantasy? What attracts you to them? Aesthetics, interesting society, practices, ethos or something else? Also, if you could design a species or culture for any major sci-fi franchise universe, what would you create and how would they fit into that franchise or universe? That's a big question. Um, so I tend to really like those cultures that sort of blend science fiction with fantasy. Sort of like how the Time Lords have like that science that's so advanced, but they label it with things that sound mystical, like the Hand of Omega and 
and things like the army of never was and the could have been king um i like yeah i like a blend of like the sci-fi and fantasy stuff um as guardians too when they uh you know when they blend mythos with science Battlestar Galactica's colonies do that a bit with like their gods and Bajorans, prophets, that sort of relation in Star Trek. I like taking aspects of m magical stuff and explaining it with like pseudoscience. Um, usually leads to some cool and grandiose designs with the architecture too. Um, the excuse to use swords as an optimal weapon in an age of space lasers, things like that. Um, the potential for cool superpowers and any species that stretches the realms of fantasy and science fiction like biotics from Mass Effect as well um, which in my mind fantasy and science fiction they're like two separate genres despite always being in the same category in most bookshops which bugs me I like them both but they're separate to me so if I was gonna make sci-fi culture it would be something like that it would be like a, an ancient race that's perhaps not in the limelight of galactic society anymore it sort of just takes a back seat sort of wanders around maybe kind of like the Elorians from Star Trek um, but they've got all this ancient lore that ties back to vague creationism and things like that. You know, again, blending that fantasy mythos with science fiction. Do you play Mega Man? And who is your favourite character? I do not know. I didn't grow up with a lot of the classic games like Mario, Mega Man and Sonic. Um, I wasn't allowed a gaming console for a long time as a kid. My first game was actually Pokemon Red for the Game Boy back when the Game Boy Color was already out. So as a result I never really got to play any of the like, OG games, didn't have a Nintendo 64 or a SNES. Um, first console was the PS1, like the original box one, not the slimmer one. And first game so that was actually the Final Fantasy series, Final Fantasy 7 and 8. Which I enjoyed immensely, but that does mean that a lot of these you know, classic games I never really got to experience and as a result I don't have that nostalgic draw to keep coming back to them when new releases come out. So yeah, sorry. Uh, I want you to do the ever classic and sort of honorary waypoint for sci-fi channels, ideal sci-fi military. However, as you don't have an exact sci-fi franchise you favour, you should do one across any sci-fi navy, fighter corps, Army, Spec Ops, Resource and Engineers. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a fun idea. Uh, looking into the effectiveness of different franchises' military strength. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, I did something kind of similar with the Federation's Starfleet, although that was sort of labelled under the branches of like how to defeat it as sort of a, an analysis of its tactics and might. On the Hooniverse front, Doctor Who, I'm gradually looking into more stuff about the Time War. Uh, itself and the surrounding events so I'm imagining there's going to be a good basis there for videos of this sort of genre focused around the Time Lords maybe seeing how their effective time military worked which is something that's never explored in the show because they're above all of that but clearly not because they ended up at war with the Daleks that's a while away though because like I say it's something I've just started looking into and I want to get hold of some of the audiobooks uh, examples of how different sci-fi or fantasy cultures represent real-world ones and the issues of the times they were created in. Sci-fi has a strong lineage and tradition of doing things like this, adopting problems into its narrative, usually through adapting, you know, especially Star Trek in particular, adapting something into an issue of the episode that's then examined from two different sides and Sometimes the solutions presented, sometimes the non-ideal solutions presented, and everyone laments the fact that there's no perfect outcome. Um, that's a very in-depth topic, and I tend to stick to in-universe law. You know, looking at everything within continuity, hence the in-game part of the channel's name, you know, in-universe in-game. Uh, but again, I'm not opposed to the idea, I just feel that I couldn't do these topics justice. Maybe if I approach them with the with what the creators had in mind instead of how they're interpreted by viewers. I don't know. I've recently watched What We Left Behind and they point out the that since the events of the last couple of decades they might rethink on how they portrayed the terrorism and freedom fighter aspects of the Bajor and Cardassian occupation. You know, add some more context and with hindsight some of these things might have become infinitely more complex and sensitive. I don't know if I could address things like this with enough 
finesse as personally I tend to have a rather blunt attitude towards a lot of topics like this. Which Star Trek is your favourite and what is your favourite Federation ship including classes from Star Trek Online? My favourite tends to be whichever one I'm watching at the time but I kind of have a soft spot for Enterprise as it's what I remember watching live with my family growing up. Most of the TNG era were already on repeats and reruns by the time I was watching them so my parents had already seen them but Enterprise was the first time we were all on the same blank page as it was being aired concurrently moving through the series. Uh, my favourite vessel? That's a toughie. Can we go... I'm going to pick a canon one and an extra canonical one. So the canon one is going to be the Akira class or the Excelsior class. Sit. I can't even get that one down. Um, Excel I'm going to go with the Excelsior class. Yeah, canon one is Excelsior and for non-canon vessels it's going to be the USS Armager. No, I'm um, I quite liked the Pioneer class from Star Trek Online's Temporal Intro Missions or the Vesta class from the Destiny novels which does also turn up in Star Trek Online. But yeah, I really like the angular torpedo Vesta but then I really like the classic bulky Excelsior as well. So two very different styles but I like them both. Are you a fan of smooth jazz? More seriously, what sci-fi series would you choose if you could only watch one for the rest of eternity and why? Deep Space Nine, not Star Trek as a whole, for example. Um, depends. Do I like smooth jazz? Do you like sci-fi? I think I know who this is. Only one series, um, Voyager. I think I could watch an episode every so often and I could do it in real time to mimic Voyager's seven year journey throughout the Delta Quadrant. That sounds like a fun game to fill up a couple of decades, right? He says optimistically. Yeah, probably Voyager, and I'd invent some sort of watching game to play with it. Take a shot every time there's meaningful character development. No, that would keep me sober. I have to agree with James Bell. It'll be great to see some Stargate personnel files or cultural index videos. Again, refer to the previous answer. I've not seen enough of it to really cover it properly. I've certainly seen like sporadic episodes here and there. Have you ever played Homeworld? What are your thoughts on the series? You guys are making me feel like I'm missing out on a lot of games, which is probably true. No, I haven't, and I actually had to Google this one. Uh, I hadn't heard of it. And it looks like an RTS series, which is a genre I haven't really delved much into either, honestly. Um, I find it very strange that so many science fiction games are in this like real-time strategy genre. Unfortunately, that's like I say, that's a genre of games that I don't have much experience with, <clears throat> I don't have much experience with, probably because I think of myself as a tactical genius and games like this would shatter that fallacy and make me feel bad. What about a chat about your opinions on humanity's future, warts and all? <laughs> we, we're all gonna die. I really enjoy watching your videos, you have earned it. And yeah, I think it would be nice to know a little more about the person behind this channel. Thank you. I make them to be enjoyed, so mission accomplished. Uh, so, my name is Rick, short for Richard or Rich, and I like science fiction, fantasy, RPG games, and long walks across the beach strewn with the bodies of my slain victims. Also, I probably shouldn't have said that. Do a video on those Romulan social media gurus, the sub-commanders. Hey, I see what you did there. Though, honestly, I think the YouTube algorithm is probably run by binars. Literally can't understand it. Why didn't you take about Voyager, but, or importantly, have you ever think about lore, video on Borderlands, or more on Destiny? I do take about Voyager. Uh, Slipstream was from Voyager. The Intrepid class mentions it. Janeway has a personnel file. But if you mean a video specifically on the USS Voyager, like the other Legacy videos, I'm actually working on that too. That's coming out probably next, not not next Sunday, Sunday after, fortnight from now. As for Destiny, I do want to do another video on one of the races, maybe the Cabal, or perhaps even just a, like a general bullet point overview on the history of Destiny as, as a universe, but I'd have to bring in help for that one as I haven't played enough recently to keep up with it. Borderlands is also a pretty fun series, which just got a new one out. Yeah, maybe I'll do a video on that, on like on, on Pandora, to show how it ended up being a wasteland and abandoned its paradise. That'd be fun. 
and the corporations around it. I like looking into that again. Yeah, Borderlands not not off the table. Congratulations, man! Smiley face. Thank you, smiley face. Oh boy, this one's a big one, so I'm probably going to answer it as I go through it. So maybe finding and playing some obscure video games, for example, Sword of the Stars or Dust at Elysian. Oh, Dust at Elysian Tale. Or maybe you could play classical gems like the original Systems Shock. Uh, I've done a couple of obscure titles um, on the channel. I think there's a playthrough of Necropolis, which isn't science fiction. This is back when the channel wasn't specifically dedicated to sci-fi. Which is just something that sort of happened as it evolved. And then I did do one called... Devoid? Um, that was pretty obscure. Only, only six parts, only about 20 minutes long each. Um, and I did one on Soma, which was an awesome game. So, yeah, I'm not opposed to like finding smaller games. I've got a bunch in my Steam library that I need to work my way through at times as well. Again, I'm not sure whether this channel's the place to upload them now because of what this channel sort of evolved into, being like a law thing. Though Sundays, no, Tuesdays has always been like dedicated to Star Trek Online, but originally that was just gaming in general, um, wasn't specifically Star Trek Online. So if I ever take a break from the STO series, maybe I'll fill it in with a, uh, a different franchise. Now perhaps something more modern like 2016's Prey. Funnily enough, that was also one of the games I was considering doing a Let's Play of, but Alien Isolation won out because I hadn't actually played that. But yeah, no, that was, or actually, I was considering doing that. I was also wondering, would you do a cultural index on one of the races from the Orville? And is depending on your preference. Also, have you ever tried making up a sci-fi or fantasy civilization in a sandbox game? Uh, yes, to the last one, ages ago. Um... It didn't end well, I turned them into a peaceful race and I had them charge across the plains delivering presents to another tribe which probably massacred them and killed them all. So that was my attempt at making a friendly sci-fi race of aliens. They all died and got eaten. Yeah, as for the Orville, yeah, I, I've seen both series of the Orville. The thing is with the Orville is it's currently still airing so I don't want to do a like an index or a lore video on, say, the Krill, um, and then a bunch of new stuff gets revealed about them, as kind of did sort of happen with the last, late, you know, the latest series. Um, but yeah, no, I love the Orville. I would like to do some more stuff on the Orville as well, but I haven't touched it at the minute, lore-wise, because they could introduce stuff which completely makes the videos irrelevant. Yeah, it might be something you would enjoy, not to mention how many times did the Cultural Index take that it might be something you'll be decently good at. Where? How many more attempts? Does that mean how many more attempts before I'm actually any good at cultural index? Aww. I thought I was good at it. Ish. Kind of umkin. No, um, not quite sure what you meant there. Sorry. Either that or you could do something on one of the factions from Minecraft's 2T2B. Of course, doing any of this is all up to you and your preference. I love your work and your channel. So thank you very much for the wonderful content and I hope you keep up the good work. Ah, Thank you. Um, I'm probably not going to touch anything like Minecraft or, you know, creation games in general because there's a lot of, like, YouTube's flooded with that sort of stuff already. But yeah, thank you for the nice sentiment. Has anyone ever completed Skyrim 100%? I'd have to imagine technically no, because there's a radiant quest system in it which constantly spawns new objectives and missions, and although technically they're just repeatable, you can't really finish all of them. Perhaps you could do all of them once, and like explore every dungeon, and you could do that, but technically that's still not 100% complete, is it? Also, the blooming Dark Brotherhood missions from the Night Mothers are bloody repeatable quest, so that's never going to end. So you can never complete that to assassinate a target. Why do you mispronounce the names of the Cardassian ships from Star Trek as Galore when they are and should be pronounced as Galore? Uh, because I was never corrected, and it's probably something I do now without realising. Like the Undine one, I constantly have to think about the word Undine for a sec, because I keep wanting to say Undine. Um, it's the same, you know, I'm surprised you didn't pick up on how I pronounce Omega and Beta. 
That seems to annoy a lot of people, and I actually have to make a conscious effort to pronounce it Omega or Beta. So yeah, it's just how it was pronounced around me when I was growing up and copied it, just like you learn anything. So I have to make a conscious effort to pronounce it otherwise. Which I, I attempt to do. For example, the Omega in Doctor Who, it's his name, so I made an effort to pronounce it as Omega rather than Omega or Omega. And those examples are real words, you know, real words. So imagine how that, how that problem compiles when they're fictional words that no one around me ever actually speaks in frequent conversation as well. What happened to the other person who was in early videos? Uh, he fell through a dimensional gateway once while editing, just chair, you know, just one minute there, portal, gone. No. Um, so Tia used to do videos with me in the early days when we covered gameplay stuff a lot more and he turns up when we did the podcast things and will probably turn up again if we do more. Um, but he's got a lot on his plate right now in the form of a new family and a, and a little bubby. So as you can imagine, he's got his hands full with that and he's looking to move house as well. Plus, like me, he has an actual real world job that pays a steady wage and that's a far more stable foundation for his family than a, a YouTube channel for his new family. So he's always welcome back to help out on videos and, and you know, crop up from time to time and help with the channel and everything. And it's always fun to work with him, but yeah, there's, there's no pressure on him at the minute because he's had a kid, which is super exciting. Next one just says alternate history. Is it? How would you know? What do you think would have happened when the Iconians returned in the Mirror Universe? I think the Mirror Universe would have decided to GTFO and then try, you know, try to invade ours, the Prime Timeline, as the Iconians levelled the Terran Empire and usurped control of all of its subjugated species. Have you played Warframe before or had any interest in it? Asking mainly because the guys that make it also made one of these Star Trek games way back. Yes, yes, I, I did, I get that one. I played that and I actually enjoyed Warframe. I didn't keep up with it though. Um, I played a Loki frame back when it first came out for a couple of months afterwards and visited it again a bit later on. Uh, yeah, but I sort of had to drop it as I already sink a lot of time into two other sort of MMO games, um, you know, like online games, Star Trek Online and actually Final Fantasy XIV. And Star Trek Online, I sort of, play for business now rather than you know I'll come back when there's new content but I've, I've done a lot of it now um, and FF14 is sort of got a resurgence again with the latest expansion on that uh, so they're where most of my MMO time sync goes Warframe is one of those games of the same vein where I know if I get into it I'd want to dedicate a lot of time to it and I'd be playing it lots so I kind of avoid it for that reason because I know how much I enjoyed it and I know how deep it is and how much I, I do like it I just don't have the time to dedicate to that alongside other games that I'm playing as well but yeah Warframe liked it had a great deal of respect for it as well are there different Enterprise captains for each timeline and two what the Borg time well what's the Borg timeline uh, yes there are different captains for every Enterprise in different universes not every Enterprise, but we've actually seen this in canon. For example, in the Borg timeline, and that's the one where Picard was never recovered from being Locutus and the Federation was overrun, in that universe, Riker stayed in command of the Enterprise D, so he's the captain. In the Terran Mirror universe, it seems that we see the original captain of the ISS Enterprise NX-01 was Captain Forrest. Um, and it seems that because of like how these Star Trek universes work, there's a lot of events and similarities that consistently line up so that they never drift too far apart. Like putting key characters on certain vessels, and certain people will always be born. And you know, there's going to be a Kirk in like every universe, there's a Spock in like every universe, sort of thing. So there's all these similarities that line up, and the universes never drift too far apart, even though the changes that created them might have been hundreds of years ago. Again, see the Mirror Universe. Um, we end up with the same people sort of existing in roughly the same positions and orbiting in the same circles, but they might have been shuffled around a bit. So it's usually you'll find an Enterprise with a captain and you'll know the captain from perhaps elsewhere, 
and the captain of the current universe will be present but not be the captain. I said captain a lot in that sentence. I hope you get what I mean. What I get I mean, you know, they shuffle around the positions, but those people usually exist in every universe. Just like as echoes of their other lives. I answered both there. See? I explained what the Borg timeline was and about different captains. Did it both in one answer. One very long, winded, convoluted answer. That's what I do. Sounds good. I still need to do my next shout out video. Your channel is listed for a mention. I Thank you, Wolfgang1. Yeah, there's a shout out there as well. I just wanted to thank you for all the wonderful content, whether STO or lore videos. I watch them all. Thank you. And I wish your channel a steady growth. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, or any or all of the above. That's what all contributes to the steady growth of this channel. And it's nice to know that I'm not talking into a void. Well, yeah, that was all the uh, replies that I got from the community tab. Thank you to all who subs and all of you who have just even watched a video of mine at any point. It all adds up and it helps transform all this into reality. This was originally a small gaming channel lost in the crowd, but I was able to find like-minded fans from some of my favourite franchises and share that passion with you all. So thank you for joining me here. And uh, I guess until the next video, I've been Rick. Let me know if you want to see more of these informal chat type things. And I'll see you next time for another lore video. I've been Rick and goodbye.